Hey, how's it going everybody? Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to part five on a series where I show you how to build a simple modern habit tracker called consistency. Now I know it's been some time since I posted the last part of this series, but uh, university was just crazy last semester and I really had to just put everything aside and focus on that. But uh, nevertheless, I'm trying to stay as consistent as I can with this. So now let's take a look at where we left off last time. Basically, we created a dummy goals component. There's really no actual functionality here just yet. Uh, all we did was use a static list that contains objects that have our goals. And we're just displaying those uh, in this component. Uh, the second thing that we did in the last video was create an express server that had one simple endpoint that returns us a list of goals. Now, the logical next step here is to get rid of this static list of goals on the front end and fetch the goals from the server instead because currently our React application does not communicate with our backend Express server. And so here are the steps that we're basically gonna be doing to accomplish this. The first step is to set up the Redux state to store our goals, because remember, we're using Redux to manage the local state of our application. Uh, if you aren't too familiar with Redux, I recommend going back and watching the second part of this series where I explained in a bit of detail how Redux Toolkit works with Create React App. So let's go ahead and start this first step. Okay, so to start creating our state, let's create a new file in this goals folder over here called goals slice.js. Okay, slice is nothing special. It's just the name of a file that handles the state for a specific part of the site. In this case, it's goals. So let's start off by importing a function that we're gonna need called create slice. And that's gonna be from Redux.js slash toolkit. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this function that we imported by setting const goals slice equal to the output of create slice. Okay, so create slice takes an object. Okay, this object in this object, the first thing that we're gonna set is the name property. We'll set this to goals. Okay, the second thing is going to be an initial state and we'll create a constant called init goals state. And we'll also have some reducers. For now, we'll be we'll keep it empty and we'll also have extra reducers. I'm gonna explain the difference between reducers and extra reducers in just a bit, but let's create this initial goal state first. So const init goal state equals, and we'll make this an object. Now, what do we wanna store in the state of goals? Well, the first obvious thing is a goals list, and that's gonna start off as an empty list. Now we also wanna keep track of the loading state because when we send API requests, we can change the loading state and display some kind of loading thing on the front end. So we'll set this to idle to start off with. And we also wanna keep track of the error states. Uh, this is gonna start off as null, okay? So the last thing that we wanna do in this file for now is export default goal slice dot reducers. Okay, let's save this and let's have a look at the browser console and look at the Redux tab. Right now, all we have is the counter state. Well, the reason is because if you go to store.js, which is basically where the store is created, we only have what came out of the box with Redux Toolkit, which is just this counter state. Again, if you want a refresher of how Redux Toolkit works, I recommend going back and watching part two. So let's take this out for now as we don't need it anymore. And let's also remove the import for that. And instead of that, let's import the reducer that we just created, which is goals reducer from components slash goals slash goal slice. And now in the configure store reducer, let's set the let's set the property goals equal to the goals reducer. Now let's save this and take a look at the browser console once again. And under the state, we now have goals with our initial state that we set up. Okay, great. So let's mark that first step off the list. We now have a Redux state that stores our goals. So the second thing that we need to do is set up an asynchronous function that calls the slash goals endpoint. So if we take a look at the code, we created this endpoint slash goals, and we tested it out with the Postman API in the last video, and it just returns this list of goals. But now from the front end, in order to send a request to the server at that URL, we need to create an asynchronous function. So to do that, we're gonna use another function from Redux Toolkit called create async thunk. Okay, it's kind of a funny function name, but it's very, very useful, and I'll explain why in just a sec. So let's set const get goals equal to create async thunk. It's gonna be equal to whatever create async thunk returns. And now before writing more code, I do wanna just explain what exactly this function does because it could be a little bit confusing. And if you look at the Redux toolkit documentation, there's a whole section dedicated to just this one function and everything that it can do and all the options that you have with it. 
but it's kind of extensive. So I simplified it by making just a couple slides that tells you what you need to know. So first of all, what is create async thunk? Well, basically it abstracts the standard approach for handling async request life cycles. Basically, when you have an asynchronous request, you need to handle when that request is in the loading state, when it's in the error state, and when it's in the success state. And so basically this one function does those things for you. And what parameters does it take? There are three parameters, but the third one's optional. The first one is a type. And what it is, is just a string that is used to auto-generate actions. So let's give the first parameter as a string of goals slash get, okay? And the second parameter is a payload creator, which in simple terms is just a function that runs some asynchronous logic and returns a promise. And so for those of you who may not remember, a promise is just an object that may produce some value in the future. And because of the word may and in the future, that's why we need to handle the life cycle of this request, the loading, error, and success dates. So let's go ahead and give the second parameter as an asynchronous function. We're not going to give it any parameters yet, but we'll use arrow functions and the curly brackets to create our function. And here is where we will call the API for get slash goals. Now, another question you might have in mind is what does this function actually return? Okay, we know what parameters it takes and we know what it does, but what actually gets saved in this get goals constant? Well, let's take a look here. Basically what it does is it returns a Redux func action creator, meaning it's an action creator that returns a function instead of an object. If you recall from part two, when I was explaining Redux, uh, when React calls an action creator, that action creator is just a function that returns an object, okay? And that object has a type value and some other data stored with it. But action creators can also return a function and that is called a thunk action creator, okay? So create async thunk returns a thunk action creator. I've said that word way too many times now. Anyways, we'll be able to dispatch this thing just like we would with any other actions. But the other cool thing about create async thunk is when we dispatch this get goals thunk action creator, it will automatically do some things for us. And that includes dispatching the pending action, okay, which we'll need to handle in our reducers. It will also call the payload creator, which is the second function that we passed it here. And then when that promise is done from the payload creator, it will automatically dispatch the fulfilled or rejected actions if it was successful or rejected. Now, if all that sounds still a little bit too confusing, I highly recommend going to their documentations and reading through the description of this because this function does a lot of stuff and sometimes it can be confusing to understand. But hopefully this explanation made it a little bit easier. So now let's go ahead and perform the API call. So to do that, we're going to be using Axios. So let's go into our terminal, go into the front end folder of our project, and let's do npm i Axios. Axios is basically the library that we're going to be using to send our asynchronous request. Okay, cool, that's done. Let's go back into the code and at the top of our goal slice file, let's import Axios from Axios. And then to actually make our call, it's very simple. We'll set the response of our API request equal to await axios.get. In the future, we're gonna be making different types of API requests like put, post, and delete. So this one is get and now here we'll specify the URL, which is going to be the slash goals URL, like we said over here. And then finally, let's just return response.data. Now at this point, you may be tempted to just export this get goals action, thunk action creator uh, and dispatch it from our goals component. But before we do that, remember, we need to write some reducers that will handle the actions that create async thunk is gonna be dispatching. Remember when I said in the slides that when dispatched, the thunk will do three things. The first thing is dispatch the pending action. So first let's handle that pending action. And we're gonna do that in the extra reducers. The reason we're not doing that in the reducers is because the actions that we're handling in extra reducers are actions that we aren't, we are not manually dispatching. Okay, we are not manually dispatching this pending action. So we're not gonna be putting it in the reducers. We're actually gonna be putting it in the extra reducers. And what we're going to be using as keys are the values that we'll get from get goals. So this first reducer is going to have a key of get goals dot pending. Okay. So remember a reducer takes in the current state, takes an action, and it's going to have some logic to change the current state. So if the pending action is dispatched, let's check if state dot loading is equal to idle. If that's the case, then let's set state dot loading 
equal to pending. And that's all we need to do for this case. So if we have get goals, and instead of using successful, the actual, the actual terminology used in Redux Toolkit is fulfilled, then let's respond with another reducer. It's gonna take a state and it's gonna do some stuff in here. So if we have a fulfilled action dispatched, let's check to see first of all, if state.loading is actually equal to pending, then let's set the state loading back to idle. Then let's set state.goals list equal to action.payload. Whoops, I missed an extra equals here. And we're actually not using the data that comes with the action for pending. We just need to set the states loading to pending. Now, the third case that we need to handle, which for which I'm just going to copy paste this thing down is get goals dot rejected. Okay. It's also going to take the current state and action. And if the state dot loading is pending, we're going to set the loading back to idle because the request is finished. But instead of setting the goals list, we're going to set state dot error equal to action dot payload. Sorry, equal to action dot error. Okay, and let's save this now. So basically, once this promise is fulfilled, right, if it's successful, then it's going to dispatch a fulfilled action with response.data being the payload. And if this promise gets rejected, the rejected action will be dispatched to the store and we're going to set the error state equal to action dot error. One thing that I did forget to mention up here in get goals is we need a try catch. So let's quickly create this here. Let's remove this response stuff in the try and then in the catch for catch error, uh, in order to return the proper error response, we're actually going to need one parameter that will automatically be passed into our, th our payload creator, which is called the Thunk API. Basically, all you need to know right now is that the Thunk API contains a bunch of useful functions for working with Redux. So one function that we can destructure right now is reject with value. And this is coming from the Thunk API. And what we want to do in this error case is return reject with value, which the name is pretty self-explanatory. And the value that we're going to pass it is error dot response dot data. Now we have a proper way of catching errors that could be thrown from this API request. Now at this point, we are ready to export this Thunk Action Creator and actually use it in our goals component. So at the top here, let's import this thing that we just made from dot slash goal slice. Okay, now in order to dispatch this action, we need to import a couple other things. Let's import use dispatch from React Redux. Let's also import use effect, which is basically a hook that lets us handle side effects and do stuff after we render our component. We're going to eventually get rid of this list over here, but for now we're going to keep it because we don't want any errors being thrown. So let's get dispatch from use dispatch. Okay. This is going to let us dispatch an action or a thunk action creator to the store. Remember use effect takes two things. The first one is a function. That's basically the effect that we're going to be running. And the second thing is a dependency array, which is stuff that our effect is dependent on. All we're simply going to do here is dispatch the get goals thunk action creator. And one dependency that we have here is the dispatch function. So now once our component is done being rendered, it should dispatch this thunk action creator. Let's also just save this file and let's take a look at what's happening right now. So as we can see in the Redux of our browser console, uh, our page got refreshed and the pending action for the get goals was dispatched and the rejected action was also dispatched. Let's take a look at the console and see if there are any errors. It's saying slash goals 404 not found. The reason here is because it's looking for slash goals at localhost 3001. But remember, our server is actually running on port 5000. So we need a way. So now we need a way for our React application to forward unknown requests to our server. If you're not sure how to fix this problem, I highly recommend doing some Googling and trying to see if you can figure it out because it was a little bit of an annoying thing to figure out. But basically, if you go in your package.json file, you can add a field all the way to the end of it called proxy, which will basically point unknown requests to a certain URL. And that URL for us is going to be HTTP colon slash slash localhost 5001. I actually have something else running on 5000. So I'm using 5001 and then slash at the end. 
Now let's save this. And since we manually made a change to the package.json, we're going to have to reload our React application. So let's go to the terminal and restart the front end. Okay, so let's see what happens once this reloads. So we don't have the error here anymore. And if we go back into Redux, we can see that we have the fulfilled action dispatched to the store and our goals state now contains a goals list with all the information that was sent from the backend, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now that we have the data that we need stored inside of Redux, we simply just need to get this data out of Redux in our component and display that data. So now we can get rid of this hard-coded array and here's how we're going to be accessing the data from redux we're going to import another we're going to import another function from react redux called use selector and what this does is basically allow us to select a certain part of our state so if we use some quick autocomplete stuff here we can set goal state equal to use selector which is going to take in the current state and return state dot goals and then from goal state let's destructure goals list. Okay, so down here, instead of using all goals, right, we're going to use goals list. And before we do the map, in just in case goals list is initially the empty list, we don't want to map over the empty list. So let's put a condition here where if goals list is not empty, then it'll do this map. So let's save this and see what's and see what's happening. Okay, awesome. So it looks like it's displaying the data that came directly from our backend. If you want to confirm this, let's quickly look here. We just have lose weight, goal one, goal two, and goal three, which is exactly what it's displaying here. So that's gonna check off number two, and it's also gonna check off number three. We have one more thing left to do. We have the use effect, but now we need the error and the loading states to display within our component. That's very easy as well. We actually already have the error and the loading states within our Redux state as well. We just need to get those in our component. So along with goals list, let's also get loading and error. So within goals container, if we have an error, then let's display a div that just says error fetching goals. And let's have another condition where if the loading equals pending, then we'll do either one thing or we'll do another thing. The first thing is pretty simple. Let's just display a div that says loading. And then for the second thing, and then the second thing, if the loading is not pending, it's basically just going to be whatever else we have here. So let's cut all of this put a fragment and paste whatever we had there. Now let's save this and let's take a look at the site. If you quickly refresh, you can see that the loading text does come up for just a split second. If we wanted to, we could also put a loading icon here to show that it's loading. But for now, this will do. And that marks off step number four for this video. So I know this video went a little bit long, but I did want to make sure I, I tried to explain create async thunk to the best of my ability and explain how we make the reducers that respond to the actions that create async thunk is going to dispatch. So at this point, the front end of our goals component is fully synced up with the back end. We could start working on adding goals in the next video. But the thing is, I want to make sure that when we add a goal, that goal is associated with a particular user. And in the future, we're going to be modifying our get goals so that we get goals for a specific user. But the problem is right now, we don't actually have users. So for the next couple of videos, we're going to be working on building a fully functional user authentication system. I used most of my winter break to kind of build that system out. So I'm looking forward to showing you guys how I put that together. And hopefully you guys can learn from that process as well. But yeah, that's going to end this video. And I hope you'll continue to join me in building out the rest of this application. I really look forward to showing you guys how to do that. And definitely, if you guys have any feedback about how I can improve my explanation style or, I can, or how I can improve the site in general, please feel free to let me know. And if you enjoyed this video and you learned anything from it, please feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.